hi everyone and uh, welcome to this discussion on uh, bengali sf uh, if you ask me one hour is too less but we'll try to uh, you know do justice uh, to the subject and to your time uh, and the reason we uh, chose bengali sf to go with is the history of uh, indian sf uh, you know so you can say begins with uh, sf in bengali or uh, by bengali authors uh, and for the purposes of this discussion and given that it's it's a vast topic till about 1947 when we say bengali sf we mean uh, united bengal and then uh, you know pa past that when we say bengali sf we will uh, limit ourselves to uh, sf uh, from uh, west bengal and not bangladesh because that is another subject of discussion for another are all together you know for uh, another day now to uh, start with uh, i'm in fact uh, this is one of the things that i one of the reasons that i wish i was a bengali because every bengali seems to have been fed on a steady diet of science fiction from their childhood and it's uh, you know living up to its reputation of having the most robust uh, tradition and legacy of uh, science fiction uh starting from i think uh from as early as 1835 uh when uh, uh kailash chandra dat wrote a journal of 48 hours in the year 1945 so he it was a sort of time travel thing you know where he uh, portrayed uh india 110 years from now i mean of course uh, we must look at this in the background of uh the colonial tensions uh, that are going on and then uh 10 years later his uh, cousin uh uh shashi chandra dat wrote the republic of orissa a page from the annals of the 20th uh, century again you know a time travel thing but these were both in 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 english uh then of course the other landmark story uh, that was there is uh, himlal dat's uh, rahasya uh which means mystery and it it, it was this wondrous tale of these automatons and new machines and all that which was uh, you know sort of wondrous for that age but you are the historians of bengali sf they would all these three they wouldn't uh, you know consider strict science fiction uh, for that until now uh, the first story uh, was uh, you know niruddesher kahini i hope i'm pronouncing that right the story of the missing one by jagdish chandra bos uh, thanks devraj i'm trying to do my best uh, by uh, jagdish chandra bos and um, till now it has been considered the first true science fiction story of the modern era not just in 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 bengali sf but also in indian sf it's a wonderful story about how uh bos uses uh a, a, a bottle of hair oil to <laughs> you know uh, thwart a, a cyclone and it's also a landmark in world sf or in literature uh, that it was the first time perhaps that the butterfly effect or what you call initial you know dependence on initial conditions uh was used in a story so you know it has more numbers that count so for the longest time that story uh was you know considered the first but then i think we in uh the light of what the kalpa biswa team and deep have figured out i think it's time to rewrite that bit of history so deep can you just tell us a bit about this other story that has now been proven to have come before uh nirudeshir kahi yeah uh, it was a story uh, by jagadananda bosch he was uh, also the uh, contemporary one of the con contemporary science writer of that time he actually was very close to uh, rabindranath tagore and he used to teach in uh, shanti niketan so jagadananda bosch wrote a story uh, is called uh, shukra bhraman so the story was actually available for a long long time because uh, it was uh, a part of a, a part of one of his book which is published in like 1920 or 22 i can remember that time but uh, the thing is uh, since it was published much later and in that book actually uh, in preface jagadananda said that he has written it long back but there was no proof that when he was written that story and where it was first published he didn't mention any of this so most of the uh, researchers they actually thought that it was actually not the first story because uh, in that story he said that uh, two of the two friends they 
thought they were going to uh, Shipra grow, and they found a civilization there. And that civilization, alien life, and their society and everything, it was so vibrant and so logical that people actually thought that it was copied from uh, one of the worlds or those kind of alien invasion stories. And since that one of the worlds and it, uh, all those, uh, and some of those kind of stories are written after 19, uh, 1898, so people all assumed that it was all. Uh, of course, written after 1898, so it was written in 19 uh, after 19th century. So the first story should be uh, Nirdesh Kahini by Jagadish Bosch, because Jagadish Bosch written that story in a very specific magazine. It was also very uh, like a funny story. There is a uh, magazine. It's called Kuntalin. Kuntalin was actually a hair oil at that time. In Bengal, there is a uh, very famous hair product company, and their uh, leading product was Kuntalin hair oil. So they say, th thought about that, uh, like uh, coming up with a magazine, and only uh, they are going to make a competition on that. Uh, some kind of you have to write some kind of story where you have to promote that Kuntalin hair oil without saying much about, uh, like, it's a promotion. You, you don't have to say it's a promotion, but you have to use that Kuntalin hair oil in some way. And Jagadish Bose wrote that story there, and that story was uh, published in the first edition of that uh, Kuntalin magazine, and it got the first prize also yes. in the edition. Yeah. So, so it was like uh, they, they have... Uh, there, there is a uh, that magazine was available, and we all know that this magazine is uh, published in 19, uh, 1895. Uh, 1895 or 96, I can't remember right. Uh, it's 1896 actually. 1896, yes. Yeah, it's published in 1896. So uh, we didn't have any idea that when uh, Jagadananda was wrote that uh, his story. So uh, sometimes back, we actually found an, uh, in a magazine that uh, there is an anecdote uh, written that he wrote some stories, uh, some science stories or science fiction stories in Bharati magazine. The Bharati magazine is also a very famous magazine uh, in uh, Bengali, but uh, it is impossible to find out or track out all those copies of that magazine. But fortunately, in Heidelberg University, there is a section of old magazines, old Indian and Bengali magazines, and they actually give uh, free uh, uh, access. Copy, uh, yeah, access, and they uh, just made PDF of those all those magazines very well preserved. So we went to that uh, Heidelberg University uh, uh, archive and found it, all the magazines, and after. Uh, sorting out, we found an uh, original story, and that story, that Shukrabhavan was actually published one year before Jagadish Chandra Bosch's story. And if you actually read that story, uh, it was, I, I, I know that maybe every, uh, some some of the uh, you guys maybe will, who actually read uh, Jagadish Bosch's story, they, they may, maybe you can object, but uh, the Shukrabhavan is much superior than uh, Bose's story, actually, because it has actually de depicted a uh, society, alien society, and there also racism is also there, and there is a dark side of the planet and the light side of the planet, and in light side of the planet, all the societies and everybody, they are actually very, very alike to... Uh, the uh, European society and the dark part is with their society is very alike to like the African savage, uh, savage societies there. And uh, th he has given a lot of uh, interesting uh, scientific anecdote also, like how the, uh, uh, the, uh, the societies, how they are making their house, how they are uh, providing their foods and everything. And, Overall, the story is, in my uh, opinion, this much, much uh, close to a real science fiction than uh, Palatok Tufan. 
and and now uh, since it's been proven that it was published a year before so yeah. it it takes on the mantle of being the first i mean according to the first modern sf uh, story in you know proper right. sf story in bengal right right i mean i i i, I was fortunate enough to uh, read the translation of it but in yeah. a you know a, like do not share sort of a basis i i i do hope that you know it's it's such a great story i yes. i hope that the translation gets published somewhere and becomes the, yeah the translation is going to be published uh, i think it is by bodhishakta right bodhishakta yes. yes. yeah uh, and after that uh, if you uh, go chronologically then we must say about uh, sultana's dream which is also a landmark uh, it was written in 19 105 and so initially it was written in english and it was also a spectacular thing because that time uh, someone is writing feminist sf and uh, who belongs to a muslim uh, society and she she is writing it in english in at that time so it was also a very very spectacular thing uh, later she actually uh, translated it in bengali also uh, i didn't know that uh, we found out that from bangladesh we can find out uh, that writing in bengali also actually oh. uh, there were two uh, two works by begum hussain uh, both sultana's dream and padmara and right. published in india's ladies magazine so yeah yes. so two nice fiction and ironically it also resembles you know the dc comics uh, wonder woman Amazonian yeah. land where it is ruled by yeah. women. There is yeah. a general role reversal. So that's role a brilliant reversal. concept. Yeah, brilliant concept. No, no. I mean, I mean, for 1905, it was quite, quite, quite revolutionary. The fact yes. that the, all the men are in the zenana, yeah. right? And the women yeah. are women yeah. take yeah. all all the decisions. And I, I love the descriptions. You know, the work gets done much faster when it's women doing <laughs> it because apparently uh, all smooth, the, the, the the men are just good at like having chai and taking smoke breaks. and wasting yes, time so women get things done faster <laughs> yeah all of that yes. and when in this society yes. the men yes. are allowed to do everything except embroidery because apparently they don't have the patience yeah, yeah. put a thread to her needle <laughs> yes. exactly exactly and i i love that that broad reversal and, and and you know even it's it's not just uh, in the in the context of indian sf but if you look at uh, sultana's dream uh, in the context of world sf is probably one of yes. the earliest pieces of feminist yes, sf yes. ever written yes. i mean uh, the western history is you know usually credit charlotte gilman's uh, yes, yes, herland right but 10 years before that uh, you know begum roke hosen wrote uh, uh, you know uh, sultana's, sultana's dream and coincidentally and in english uh, charlotte gilman's uh, uh utopian land is called her land whereas uh, begum rukas utopian land is called lady land <laughs> lady land so that's more british i guess yeah i mean I, like like i said we we need to sort of keep it in the context of what is going on and all and I, and I, i i remember reading up about it and her and you know she had written it to sort of uh, surprise her husband who was out on a work tour and he comes yes. back and he reads the story and he remarks most splendid revenge i don't know what what he was well referring taken. to who was well you know <laughs> taking a vengeance on whom but he is supposed to have read it and said a most splendid revenge and uh, apart from this though uh, him uh, i think uh, shukrabrahman has been uh, given this particular title as first bangla science fiction hmm. i mean in the year 1898 uh, rabindranath thakur whom you call rabindranath tagore hmm. he wrote composed this uh, play tashe desh Hmm. and in is land of cards if you translate it and in that particular play is a distant utopian land where the cards are ruling the entire country right. so you can see the traces of science fiction even in ashare goppo so yes so science fiction goes back long back yeah so it's a good thing and the ironical thing is this kuntalin thing jagdish chandra bose wrote this thing it was yes. a capitalistic strategy marketing strategy so yes. bengal came out of science fiction from capitalistic outsource or something like that so that's a very good thing i guess no and and, and, and money what, also no no he won the prize but then uh, you know and there, there was a whole subtext you know uh, of the empire in it and then when he rewrote the story in 1921 that was uh, a right uh, palatak tufan right yeah. uh, when he rewrote the same story while it stayed true in the essentials 
the science element had gone you know the scientific american which is referred to in the original story was gone yeah. uh, suddenly you had this circus lion tamer and you had this thing and the whole subversive you know the you know anti imperialist subtext was you know yes. missing when it was rewritten in 1921 mm. uh, so yeah i mean I mean, these are all great cultural figures, which is why I said, you know, I mean, if you're a Bengali, you, you will end up being exposed to science fiction. Uh, and, you know, uh, and that, you know, as, as children, we all love tall stories, which brings us to the other giant of uh, Bengali SF, uh, Premendra Mitra. Premendra Mitra, so, yeah. Like oh, man. You and Deep, please, so Premendra, you know, enlighten us. Yeah. So, so Premendra Mitra is Ghanada because he's, so uh, we have this particular term known as gulbaj. Gulbaj means who boasts his own knowledge. He has been to this land. He has been to this space and all those things. And I guess uh, Ghanada's name is Deuce or something like that. I read it a long back. Dos, 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 Dos. Dash, that, that's, that's his name. Dash. Uh, and he used to say that uh, he was called by, as a Dos, by uh, foreigners. Dos. Yeah. And he's like, dude, uh, give me this cigarette and I'm going to tell you a story, an incredible story. And he takes you back. He is himself a time machine. He takes you back to Second World War. He takes you back to the world of Mahabharat, if you look carefully. He's a fascinating figure. But in the end, you will like, ah, rai, banda rai. So that's the fun behind it. Mm -hmm. You won't call it pure science fiction and you won't call it a parody also. It's somewhere between science fiction, parody, and tall tales. It's a fascinating, fascinating. And it's the, I guess, it gives the glimpse of uh, Bengali youth in that particular era. Right. That's a cultural icon. Yeah, it's, it's a very important piece of literature from the it, culture. It is a mis culture. Mis culture means uh, some working people, they're sharing a house. And actually, uh, Ghanada used to live on the upstairs, upstairs in the roof. There is only a single room. Ghanada used to live there and sometimes he comes down and share his wonderful tales to other people and all the other guys who lives in that uh, same house, they try to uh, like find out any fault from his story. But every time <laughs> Ghanada actually used to just just say some, some kind of stuff, they couldn't find any, any logical loophole in his stories. So, I mean, if, if we are going to accept dream narratives as uh, science fiction as well, I mean, yeah. or as SF, you know, uh, then I, I, I guess it, it counts. It counts. I mean, uh, I mean, I know, uh, you know, it's a compliment that Bengalis <laughs> love to sort of analyze and overthink and, you know, everything threadbare. I mean, for example, when I was, uh, you, you know, uh, I'm not even going to attempt it because, you know, uh, but the three yeah, types, I, you know, there's science different uh, just how analytical Bengalis goes. Uh, yesterday, uh, in we have a group uh, about science fiction in Facebook. Somebody posted a like a five-page article about one of the Ganada stories. Uh, it was called Tall. That story was called. It was uh, a story about a specific uh, kind of water, which was supposed to be kind of a uh, have some chain polymer-like structure. And if it is put into common water, it's going to break that common water and make it uh, from jol to tall. Tall Jol means water in Bengali, but uh, he invented the word tall. The tall means a specific kind of water, which has uh, those, those kind of destructive nature. And the story was about that uh, one scientist, scientist make the, that kind of water and he used is going to um, change all the water of the world to that specific water. And the thing happened that somebody actually find out what is that tall. It was a polymerized water. And polymerized two, water. Yeah, two uh, scientists in uh, Soviet, uh, that time 1970s, they actually uh, claimed that they invented that kind of water. No, that was not a heavy water. Somebody uh, wrote deuterium. it uh, about deuterium, but it was not deuterium. Uh, it was kind of a polymerized something, a different kind of water. That time, it it was a very sensational news in 1970 that two two of the uh, Soviet uh, Russian uh, scientists they uh, came out with that kind that uh, that structure of specific water, 
and after one or two years it was found that uh, some other uh, I, i guess that some uh, french scientist uh, he uh, found out that that water actually didn't doesn't exist those those people actually made some mistake in their experiment and it was not a, uh, a, any kind of threat to uh, world because that property doesn't exist really but maybe what I'm happened that if, if, if only that you know presented that research paper as a science fiction story may have worked better <laughs> actually that's what uh, no, no, when the mitter wrote that original article by those russian uh, sci- the russian uh, scientist and he wrote that story that's why he used uh, all those uh, special scientific anecdotes so that's but the, after two years they that's found the out that that was bogus that, but he couldn't <laughs> change the story anyway so somebody wrote a five five uh, page article about it in our group that ghonadas fault ghonadas bull <laughs> oh i mean you you must uh, I, I, at the end of it you must probably tell uh, people are already asking what what group this is it seems okay. fascinating enough i mean if the conversation happens in english we can try or use chrome with the translate extension so yeah it is mostly in bengali actually <laughs> yeah, so basically yeah. uh, this guy uh, professor shompu uh, so he invented uh, this particular uh, device known as i guess uh, lingua graph or something which, which could translate any language to the particular from source language to particular language that is it that was the i guess uh, ancient model of this particular thing google known as translate. google translate <laughs> yeah google thing so satyajit rai was ahead of time and he could understand there is a big issue in india with this language thing there is a big issue so that's why professor shonku comes in i guess so but again okay, no, no, very close to heart yeah, no 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 we get now we're getting to where you know devraj's uh, heart <laughs> lies in talking about the rays Okay. Right. So, can, can just, just uh, uh, before he went to Shatayit, I just want to add that uh, today is the uh, birthday. birthday of Shukumar Rai, the father yeah. of oh, Shatayit. So, oh. yeah, we should uh, also mention Shukumar Rai and his work, Heshara Mushia's Diary, Heshara which is Mushari actually a kind of a precursor of yeah, precursor of Professor Shunku. Yeah. 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 Very much. Right. Very much. Very, very much so. So, a little bit about. Shukumar Ray and Satyajit Ray and their influence before. So basically, uh, Shukumar Ray. Ah, uh, so he was, uh, he was of course he was the father of Satyajit Ray. He came up with nonsensical writings. I'm not saying it's a bad. It's a nonsensical, okay, absurd literature. For example, Hajjo Bolo Law, Abol Tabol, and in a uh, in there is particular magazine, Shanonda. in the year 1992 satyajit ray gave an interview in that particular magazine that his father shukumar ray was inspired by arthur conan doyle's the lost world the professor the famous, challenger series yeah challenger's lost world and his heshoram hushiari is a bit of caricature is it's a parody of that particular professor challenger's work professor challenger yeah of course he is a big guy 7 feet tall and he cannot control his you know rage atamaji satakli with the bhusa and all those stuff and this heshora mushari he is like he's an he goes out to adventure he's an expert huntsman he takes out gun and all those stuff he goes to karakoram and all those places but there has been uh, there i think i don't remember the name of the uh, particular stories the heshora mushari's diaries came up and satyajit ray he took the uh, cue from of course his father shukumar roy and professor challenger of arthur conan doyle he came up with professor shonku in the year 1961 and his first work bomojatri diary or uh, the diary of a space traveler as published in puffins classic penguins classic and all those things so he came up with this thing he was supposed to be a parody a caricature but in the end he became a serious protagonist with a little bit of humor and all those stuff so that's shotojit rai's uh professor shongu there has been 38 works short story is one big story shornapurni the story of golden leaves so that's the entry of yes shot uh, professor shongu and i guess uh, i won't say he is the best or some something like that but he is the most uh, translated most uh, you know adapted in radio in e-commerce toys and 
translated in English. So that's how Professor Shonku is. Uh, yes, so that's it, Professor Shonku. And to description of tal water. Okay, okay. So there is an interesting comments go going over here. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, no, we'll get to we'll get to we'll run through them at the end of the <laughs> end of this conversation. Uh, uh, and this, I guess, uh, I and Deep will agree with this thing: the advent of magazines, science fiction magazines. So Sondesh was one of the magazines, science fiction magazine, which published uh, Professor Shonku. There was Ram Dhonu and Rong Moshal, the famous magazine which published Premendra Mitra's works. Yeah. And then, there, yeah. Astrod job by, you know, uh, Audrish Vardhan, who coined this particular term in 1962, yeah. Kalpo Big Gun. Yeah, that, uh, that's, there uh, is... again, uh, I have to uh, just interrupt. Uh, Kalpo Big Gun was coined by Audrish Vardhan, but not in 1962. It was again okay. wrong notion. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, we actually went through all the Astrod Job magazines and we found out okay. that it was actually in 1974. In Fantastic, he okay. first uh, used that word. Fantastic, yeah, yeah. that's another. And so there have been many magazines. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, fantastic, yes. Yeah, please carry on. Yes. Uh, I, before 1960, uh, it was like some magazines, they are actually publishing science fictions. Uh, uh, that's why Ghanada's attempt, actually, uh, Premendamitra wrote many science fictions which are not tall tales, which are actually science fiction. Tall tales, yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, which are very good science fiction, actually. Like Pipre, Pipre Puran. Puran. Yeah. Patale Dosh Bachor or something. Uh, and, and there are lots of uh, other stories also. There is actually, from this publication, there is an anthology of science fiction stories by uh, Pramendra Mitra. So Pipre those are Puran, very good science Puran, fiction yeah. stories, not tall tales. Actual science fictions. Again, uh, what I am saying that uh, in after 1960, there come Adrish Vardhan. Adrish Vardhan, that time he was a very young man, and he thought uh, that maybe they can start a science fiction magazine in India. Like that time, it was uh, science fiction was in India. It was very very uh, translation based because Hemendra Kumar Rai translated a lot of science fiction. By and Indianized it uh, in his his yeah. kind of charm. So trans, he was yeah, very good, but uh, he was actually Indianized all those science fictions. Not an original but, work. Yeah, not yeah but uh, uh, I mean, Hemendra Kumar Ray also wrote uh, you know proper science fiction stories. I, I remember something called the Martian Invasion or something. Yeah, they, uh, they are, they are uh, Mothe Agaman something. Fiction. Yeah, Meg Agaman. Yes, yeah, that's the one. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. those are kind of an adventure story, not very much science fiction story. Uh, but oh, of course, there are science fictions also. Uh, and anyway, but what uh, Adish Vardhan did, he actually uh, went to uh, Shatajit Rai, he went to Premendra Mitra, and he said that I am going to start a science fiction magazine in Bengali. And you guys actually uh, wrote science fiction. You are very famous in that field. So you back me up. It's like a boys group. Come on. Yeah. So all of them, they started the magazine, Ascharya. Ascharya. And uh, it was 1963. It was a huge hit at that time. They actually built a very group, uh, very good group of authors. And those guys, keep writing science fiction, they uh, keep translating science fiction, and it was very popular at that time, and not only in uh, writing science fiction, they actually started uh, reading science fiction in new, uh, in All India Radio also. And if the magazines them. looked anywhere like this, yeah. No wonder everybody will just rush to read it, just you know, Very based on the cover. So the credit goes to the man who designed the cover. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you do judge the book by its cover, and yeah, it's so course, nice and so nice and pulpy. I'd buy it for the covers alone. Right. And there were great editors, uh, Sujit Dhar, Ronan Ghosh. They Ronan Ghosh. Yeah. They, they yes. came. They came later, actually. Later. At, at this time, actually, only Abhishek Bardhan was the only editor. That's fantastic. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ashtadja. So in 1964, they started 
making a sheer world of science fiction story. I think that was one of the first work of sheer world science fiction. Yes, like yes, Shubhuj yes. Manush. It was Shubhuj called Shubhuj Manush, Manush, the green man. So the idea was that some of the, those guys, like uh, Adish Baddon, Premendra Mitro, uh, Dilip Rai Chaudhuri. Dilip Rai Chaudhuri was one of the pioneers. He has written wonderful science fiction. He was a scientist by profession. Uh, it's very he unfortunate was. that yep. he uh, died very young age. Uh, otherwise, I would say that he would surpass all of them, maybe. Because in very short time, he wrote very seminal science fiction because his uh, background was pure science. So, so there is a huge debate. Scientists yeah. writing science fiction, people yes, from yeah. literature writing science fiction. There's a huge debate. We can blood. We can have yeah, blood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what happened that they, they oh, wrote a story, actually four stories in a shared world where green men invaded Earth and they are trying to overthrow the human government and human uh, way of life. They are going to overthrow it. So four of them wrote four stories and without consulting anyone. And they went to um, uh, All India Radio and read that story yes, yeah. on air. Just like uh, it was, War of the Worlds. It, it was, yeah, it was all, almost like One of the Worlds, that also Noel story is to tell, tell yes, it. Yes. Like, it was very famous. It went, it went uh, there later they actually... Uh, wrote it as a radio drama and uh, it was also available in, uh, that radio drama is also available in YouTube uh, right now. But uh, what happened that that original storytelling, that four of them, they actually uh, uh, read their own stories in their own voice, that was uh, lost. That was lost uh, until we found like two years back, we found one of the uh, tapes that those round kind of tapes. We found one of that uh, hidden inside a trunk in uh, late Adish Baddhan's house uh, under a bed. It was bed. it was that there was like very for, safe. for 30, 40 years. It was uh, it was there. Even uh, when we asked Adish Baddhan, he said that I lost the tape. It was gone. So it was even, one of a kind. Yeah, <laughs> but it was there. Uh, we found it and we restored that tape. And uh, then we actually uh, published an anthology on uh, on that uh, book, uh, then on Green Men uh, from Talba Misha. So it has been translated into English. I just wanted to. No, ask uh, it it is still it wasn't translated in English, yeah. but we are on. We are still in okay, on, okay, okay, uh, cool, cool. In process that is going. It's going to be translated in English. Oh, uh, I yeah, hope yeah. very soon. Looking forward to maybe, that. Yeah, maybe it was uh, delayed because of this COVID situation. Uh, otherwise, I would uh, say that it would be uh, out. I'm waiting for those translations to come for sure because uh -huh. I read the synopsis of those stories in that scroll yes, article. Yes. Yeah. I was like, I have to read these stories. <laughs> so those are very short stories and it's an open ending. You love it. Yeah. 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 I mean, sh first time shared universe, such, you know, hmm. great men writing, sharing the same world and populating. Yeah, the India, yeah. I mean, seriously, I mean, I, 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 we, I think we all of us owe a lot of uh, debt to Deep and his team at Kalpa Biswa, you know. That's we, a very good one. Digging up of these tapes or you know doing all that research and to just figure out which year was Shukra Brahman written you know and so they are science fiction detectives going to the house <laughs> and the chest and finding out the treasures and all those things yeah, actually the, the whole thing we, we, what we have found that uh, our uh, science fiction has a very rich uh, heritage but there was very little written history about Bengali or Indian science fiction that I could very found. very little when I was doing my research there was hardly any article except Bodhisattva uh, yeah. there was Devjani Shengupta I guess John Clute the guy who even, uh, even uh, that uh, Devjani Shengupta's uh, article that uh, Sharul Sh Babu's friend, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. That yes, that yes. was that was very erroneous. Lots of errors full, full are of, there. Full of full of errors are there. No, I, mean, no, I completely agree that I read those two research papers and stuff like that. And then there it was said that uh, you know uh, Jagadananda Ray had written Shukra Brahman in 1857. I was yes. like, yes. my God, 
He's actually written a you know a science fiction story about a voyage to Venus or voyage in Venus in the year of the first world you know war of independence. But then you know turned out he was born only in the 1860s. So you know like you know before he was conceived, he's written on science fiction story. I mean it it doesn't get more science fictional than that. Yes, yes, yes. Too much of science fiction. Yes. And I guess if uh, there was Kalpa Vishnu, my research would have been very easier. because most of the text are in bengali and lack of you know whether the bibliography citation they are correct or something like that and yeah. i was like you know the kuntal intel i need the kuntal intel on my hair it was <laughs> very essential <laughs> it was and then then i remembered uh, shonkur he is almost bald maybe he was suffering from lack of you know fund or something like lack of research or something like that so no, yes, no, pro- professor shonkur actually has invented some hair oil which regrows hair Yes, no, but he he was a bald guy, man. Yeah, he was he a bald guy. Himself is bald guy. No, he. I, 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 I don't, don't know, know who he used it on or whatever. He's got like a hundred inventions. Yeah. So and the inventions are very eco-friendly. So I had this curiosity, and I read one of his uh, one of my friend's blog or something like that. So the Indian scientist, my elder brother, is a researcher uh, from pure science. Unlike me, I'm literature person. So the main problem in India is the research fund. कहा से आता है एंड देन द गवर्नमेंट ग्रांट एंड ऑल दो थिंग एंड ही यूज टू गेट ग्रांट एंड एवरी थिंग एंड ही वॉज लाइक अ ट्रू इंडियन मीन्स ही वॉज अ रिच केट ऑफकोर्स हिज फादर वॉज अ डॉक्टर ऑफ गिरिडी मीन्स बिहार और समथिंग लाइक दैट बट ही यूज टू गो टू यूरोप ओनली वेन ही वुड गेट द यू नो फंड और समथिंग लाइक दैट दैट वॉज टिपिकल इंडियन मेंटेलिटी ऑफ द प्रोफेसर यू जिस रिमबर्समेंट मिलेगा तो ही बाहर जाएंगे नहीं तो बाहर नहीं जाएंगे सो दैट वॉज वेरी रियलिस्टिक ऑफ सत्यजीत राय टू पोट्रे shonko in that light or something like that so yes and one of the good thing of shonko is that uh, you come across ghanasham dash or not bold to chakro and there is another hero something like that shonko is something he is above caste so indian hindu society is a caste is or something like that so he is above caste trilokeshwar shonko you can't come across some name and trilokeshwar means brahma vishnu maheshwar he is above everything he is above the god and he is the trinity and everything so sotritra was very clear with his nomenclature and yeah sage mode activity that's it he was almost yes. a sage <laughs> never yeah so he was he never used to drink he never used to smoke unlike feluda one of his heroes unlike professor challenger mm. and there was hardly any you know a uh, uh, female characters or something like that uh, with due reference uh, with due respect to all the females or something like that So he was like a you know he was a sage he used to he was a sage actually, yeah where 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 he's the old monk he is the old monk hmm. basically he is the old monk the 715 mark i mean we wanted to talk a bit about also uh, the whole ray alien saga hmm. which yeah. is fast so i guess uh, shotritra wrote this beautiful uh, science fiction story apart from shonku he wrote many science fiction story one is bonku babur bonku means friend of bonku babur yeah and prior to bonku babur bondu if you see the, all the you know the mars attack and all those films aliens are very hostile they are coming up like this land belongs to us bazooka and they fire the bazooka and they end up, and every city demolishes or something like that here he comes up with an alien who is very friendly he is like you know the koi mil gaya guy jadu so yeah so this bonku babur bondu was later uh, developed into a script known as the alien and the alien was later was supposed to be adapted in hollywood i guess everyone knows the story and yeah. i don't know what I mean, happened himself is written now first but... world and the third world yeah i don't know what i, went, I mean mike wilson mike wilson ba- yeah, mike wilson basically gave him a raw deal you know copyrighted it in his own name Golden. right and then yeah. the whole you know peter sellers as we yeah. say gave kai uh you know yes. i left him very sort of bitter and uh, you know um, and then uh, as he himself says you know the mimeograph copies were floating around hollywood yes, and it yes, reached yes. the hand of a certain mr steven spielberg who made alien and then uh, the the story goes that because it was arthur c clark yeah uh, so ray and clark had met in uh, london and then it was clark who actually told mike wilson about uh, satyajit ray writing the story and then mike wilson invited himself to ray's uh, home and all of that he sort of felt responsible and uh, you know uh, he actually 
called he's supposed to have called up satyajit ray saying hey this has happened you know why don't you do something and satyajit ray replies you know we artists have better things to do i moved on mm-hmm. moved on so that's it you so my favorite part of that story is where satyajit ray gets the letter saying uh, you know ravana you keep sita <laughs> yeah yeah no that's because no that that's much later after mike wilson much later, yeah. became one swami me and all of that and he's like you know dear ravana keep see the I mean, it's fun even the whole mcgonagall series i put the saga in the uh, the uh, chat and uh, you know you can just uh, read yeah, up yeah. Uh, about it now coming to uh, the Actually, when we, we talk about that uh, satyajit is playing that uh, we should also mention that uh, cine club Cine the club. science fiction science cine, cine club yeah, yeah. cine club uh, i don't know whether you have heard about it pratham uh, because uh, it was also uh, one of the uh, uh, that product brain child of uh, adishpadan satyajitra and premendra mitra they started yes. a science fiction yes. cine club in 1960s in calcutta yeah. again it was a phenomenal Just imagine club. 1960s yeah. cine club so no, they they were ahead of time they actually used to uh, go uh, write letters to different uh, embassy and ask them to send cine uh, their science fiction movies to uh, send in calcutta and adish badan used to go and uh, post those uh, those uh, responses and then they get that uh, the scans of movies science fiction movies those are coming from through the uh different channels and they start showing those in some some of those uh, uh cinema halls in calcutta and it went on like uh, two or three years at that time i think it's from 64 or 65 to uh, three years and people were actually very very interested in science fiction cinema club like all those we have some uh, photos we actually recovered again recovered some photos of that time and all uh that times called calcutta's who's who all of them them are present in those movies sessions and satyajit ray was the one who actually started saying like yeah now sound music and the movie starts those kind of thing happened and basically uh, uh, okay called, so just, just come okay so just come from the past to the present i mean of course this kalpa biswa that we uh, all know about uh okay. then uh, uh, what's the current uh, current contemporary landscape right uh, you know who are the who are the authors we need to look out for are, who are the uh, <coughs> magazines are there any translations available uh, mm-hmm. and and what does it look for you know going ahead uh, deep if you can just uh, yeah I, actually uh, okay. in uh, 2015 we started kalpa visha uh, before that uh, there was not much happening uh last science fiction magazine was uh fantastic by adish badan and ranesh ghosh and it died like in 90s still some issues went on uh, keep they keep republishing some old issues till 2000 and then everything died up like in bengali science fiction almost died down uh, at that time because nobody was actually uh, writing anything or publishing anything only science fiction was published in some uh, bengali children periodicals and those things are not really something new or contemporary or anything those are like rehashed version of 70s or 80s stories only two or three people i i, I would say that keep writing science fiction that time one is um, maybe it's ovigan rai choudhury and second one is Uh, Anish Dev. Anish Dev was one of the disciples, main disciples of Adish Bhardhan. He was a uh, he was a very very influential writer in Bengali right now, and he wrote lots of science fiction and mostly uh, genre fictions. So those two guys uh, keep writing science fiction only. And in 2015, actually, what we found that uh, there is nothing else. Uh, there is nothing much to read. uh like if i want to read uh, science fiction in english i have so much choice but in bengali i i can't find that anyone is writing science fiction i can't find anyone is reading science fiction good science fiction mature science fiction so we thought about uh, doing some uh, new magazine and some of us actually t- 
they have told us that okay make a web magazine because uh, nobody uh, is going to read a science fiction magazine or circulate a science fiction magazine is is a too too laborious job to uh, publish a science fiction printed magazine and then circulate it uh, throughout the market so why not make a web magazine it's it will be much easier and we can actually uh, uh, find some time to write and read good science fiction instead of uh, going out and selling magazine so we start kolpovisha and uh, our aim was to write contemporary matured science fiction not children's tale that was what we actually uh, decided from the beginning we are not going to write uh, children science fiction because that was what uh, people are reading and writing for the last few decades in bengal so we need to move out from there and we need to say the to other people that you have to write something which is matured which is contemporary so we actually started using some uh, theme for every issue and we gave out that theme and we had we said to all the writers that you have to write on that theme that's a contemporary theme you have to write on it so <laughs> it was kind of a like very strict in our uh, editorial when we are we are keeping it very strict so uh, it was a scientific approach in creating science fiction yeah <laughs> uh, because uh, otherwise uh, people doesn't take science fiction much seriously so we use lot of like there is like frankenstein 100 there is this collection yes. i guess which is which is why it why i said you know that that whole over analysis you know oh there are th- different kinds of science fiction there is yes. science yes. based yes. science fiction there, there is science uh, dependent fiction yes. then yes. there is rahasya and vigyan speculative one more kind uh, right you know, so, <laughs> like uh, we you guys have over analyzed it too you know <laughs> okay uh, just to want to say uh, shina do you want to say we are killing the fun huh? are we ki- are we killing the fun by over analyzing this particular thing or no, no, no. An- analysis has its own place it's it part of the fun it's part okay. of the fun right sometimes it's fun to just analyze that 